Uh, hi, everyone. Good evening. Okay. Oh, okay, I guess we'll wait for a sec for the presentation to be available. Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, so, time starts now. Hi, everyone. So, my name is Dean, and this is Flo, and we're part of the Smart Device Department for Rakuten. And I'm here to talk about, well, we're here to talk about what we've been working on, which is a glass of Rakuten. So, uh, as an introduction, uh, I'd like to show that, of course, we all know that Rakuten is like a web, big web company and we have a lot of web services here. So we thought, why not utilize these web services and put them in like a glass device? Of course, just to be clear, when you're talking about glass, we're not talking about this glass. We're talking about, you know, the Google Glass device, just so it's clear. Um, first thing first is that we need to get ideas of what to do with the glass device. So the first thing we worked on was like have people join us in a hackathon in July 2014 this year. And there were three teams that participated and they did this for like two weeks after work. It was pretty hectic, but we were able to get some really amazing applications. Uh, specifically, this, there's this like recipe video creator, so you can like take a video while chopping up onions. And then there's one where you can use a presentation system, so you can like move slides with your glass. Or you can use it for video monitoring and then also use it for like traveling with the Rakuten travel application. There were like Rakuten managers and also Google representatives who shared ideas with us so we can like improve the apps more. And further on, we'll have more hackathons. But of course, that's the ideas. The most interesting part is the actual development. So for that, I'll leave it to flow. Thank you. Okay, uh, if you're building a glassware application, probably one thing you want to do is send actual event or some kind of notification to the user. So how, how can you do that? First thing, you can use the push uh, message system. So it's basically the cloud messaging from Google. And yeah, so after your glass device registers to GCM server and to Rockton server, the server can basically send through a device ID a message through GCM to your device. Uh, another way on, uh, if you're like, building a glassware application is to use the Mirror API. So the Mirror API is based on OAuth, and the server can directly, like after obtaining the OAuth token, send a message to the Mirror API and can man like, manage the timeline, for example, like adding a new card to the timeline. Uh, also, if you're building an application, you probably want to show some user-specific content, for example, like his points, his name, his rank. How can you do that? Luckily, there's like an authentication system. So basically, you can plug in your own authentication once the user installs the Glassware application through My Glass. And basically, it works that um, your service, like your server will get some kind of user token, and then again uses the Mirror API to create a new account through on the Glassware application. So that will be, that can save like your, your custom token, your user data. Um, Another very interesting feature is, of course, since this is a glass device, you probably want to use the camera. So that's the standard camera API from Android, and you can do things like capture um, a photo or like record a video. If you want to do some more processing, for example, yeah, I don't know, barcode scanning, you probably have to pre-process the image because uh, it only supports uh, infinite mode uh, focus. And one more thing, like Glassware really like works with voice recognition, so the whole navigation, like starting the, the app or like in-app in navigation. It works through the voice recognition, as we'll see in the demo now. So, so we weren't able to connect the glass device to the presenters, but we can simulate it for everyone so you'll know what our app looks like. So when you open the glass device, you'll be shown this screen. So you start things by saying, OK, glass. And then it shows you a menu. And our application is launched if you say, sorry, <laughs> find a product. OK, and from here, you can actually just say what product you want to search for. So you say Panda. And you'll see some Rakuten, app, Rakuten Panda products that you'd like to buy, I hope. OK, and that's all for us. And thank you for listening. If you want to try some applications or web service from Rakuten, check out Web Services for Rakuten online. Thank you. Thank you very much. And they actually ended exactly at four minutes. Yes, I'm in the, I will be in the back for the presenters throwing up like three minutes, two minutes, one minute left to let you know how you're doing on time. So Alex, who's yeah. up next? So coming up next, we have Kazuhiro Seira, and he's going to talk about Scala on Rails. And uh, he's setting up his computer right now. So we'll give him a little bit of time. Oh, okay. And after Kazuhiro Seira is uh, Ariel Monaco. So if you're here, um, 
please begin to get ready. Are you ready? Okay. 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 Uh, I'd like to talk about my SCAR framework. I heard, I heard uh, Rakuten people use this Java officially before, so uh, I believe the uh, Rakuten people are in, very interested in, in SCAR too. And uh, uh, SCAR is, uh, the SCAR's key concept is mixing uh, object oriented programming and the functional programming. And uh, sometimes people uh, say that it's a, a hybrid language. And uh, the SCAR has lots of features, and uh, the especially uh, it's, uh, uh, it's very suitable for building concurrent and distributed applications, and uh, lots of uh, successful framework or libraries, for example, uh, Play Framework or Arca uh, for uh, actors, and uh, Finagre for uh, RPC from Twitter. But I think uh, the SCAR is very powerful, so. So not only for the such a reactive application, but also the, uh, developing an unusual application. I think it's also possible. And uh, what is a usual application development? For example, as a simple web application. That's, you know, while this is uh, very, uh, the most, most popular and uh, most influential uh, web framework in the world. I think uh, Roy is not just a library. Uh, and nowadays, uh, it's a, a already confirmed concept to build a web application. So I followed the latest style in the SCAR world. And I created a new framework named uh, Skinny Framework. That I believe this is a, a most developer-friendly web framework on the JVM. JVM. The installation is very, very easy. If you are a Mac user, you can use the uh, homebrew to install the skinny script. Just uh, brew install skinny. Uh, the requisite is only JDK. And if you are a uh, Windows user, there's no problem. The Windows user is also first class citizen of skinny. <laughs> so in the latest world, it's too difficult to do that. Uh, if you're using uh, Windows or Linux, uh, download the uh, blank application zip file or use, uh, if you're familiar with uh, Yoman, so uh, it's also possible to use Yoman generator. To, uh, your, just run your skinny command, you will, be, you, you will get the uh, blank project. This is a simple example. Uh, if you are using the Mac, New skinny new command is available, so you can uh, skinny new to do list as same as Rails, and just skinny run or skinny server. You can see the default top page at the local host 8080. And the uh, generator is also available, the same as Rails, so skinny generate scaffold, the plural name, and the sing uh, it's a little bit different, different from Rails, but the uh, plural name and the single and the attributes with the type. In this case, the description is a string and the deadline is an optional uh, date value. After that, as same as ways, run the DB migration uh, task. The command name is very similar to go, most uh, same. And uh, the everything is done, so you can see the uh, slash tasks, and uh, you will see that this the list page of tasks and uh, you can s uh, create a new task. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 so, uh, please thank the presence on the web. Thank you very much. So up next we have Mr. Ariel Monaco. Please come to the stage. And after that we have uh, Te Teruyuki Iwasaki and uh, Shimon. Hi there, my name is uh, Ariel. I'm from uh, Web Service uh, Platform Group. 
uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, how open source uh, is in influencing in our, our work, personal life. Uh, many technologies we use every day are bound to uh, open source technologies. Even iOS or uh, Android devices are built on, uh, on Linux or, uh, yeah, uh, BSD technologies. However, um, we, uh, we enjoy now from uh, open source systems, uh, and we can use freely, but the story of a Unix-like system has been a long um, commercial, uh, so pretty much for having an instance of, uh, of a Unix system, we had to pay a lot of money in the past, so uh, nowadays we take open source uh, pretty much for, for granted. However, it's not just a feature of open source that is uh, free or that we can modify the code. It is also uh, involving open source in the development cycle. Uh, we can reduce cost. Uh, we can uh, have input from the community, kind of uh, outsourcing uh, freely uh, our, our part of our development. We can do this in different ways, uh, such as dual licensing, or uh, releasing open core, uh, like MySQL, like Oracle uh, has done with MySQL, uh, benefiting a lot from, uh, from the community for improving uh, the database engine. Bounties is also another way uh, to uh, ask for, uh, to pay, companies pay to specific uh, developers or to contributors for implementing hard features. Uh, delay open sourcing is also uh, another strategy, business model, and they are well defined uh, today, so it's not only uh, that, it's, uh, that open source offers us to work with technology for free, again, we can uh, benefit in research, testing, planning, uh, in any part of our development uh, cycle using open source. We do so at Rakuten with many applications, and we want to encourage also uh, other, other companies to do the same. Okay, if you want to know uh, more about um, strategies on open source um, business model, please feel, feel free to contact me. That's uh, my email address. Thank you. Thank you very much. So up next we have Teruyuki Iwasaki-san, and after that we have uh, Shimon, and after that we have uh, Mr. I believe uh, Goro Otsubo. Hi, I'm Iwasaki Teruyuki, working in APIO. Today, uh, you are coming to the English conference, but I think at least some of you are working in a Japanese development team and not using English every day. In this talk, I would like to introduce your first step work in the global development team. You can study English in many different ways, as you know, but it might not be so clear for you how people use English in the real world development work. You may also want to know how good your programming skills should be to work in the global development team. Commitment to open source software is a good way, in particular, if you are interested in participating in one of the existing projects. Today, I introduce another way. It's toporder.com, one of the top sites as a competitive programming and the crowdsourcing software development service. Competitive programming area is a place to compete how fast you solve the algorithm problem correctly. There are real-time matches called single round match and muscle match, but first you can try your skill in the problem history area. You should start with division two and choose an easiest problem with 200 points. 
once you solve the problem, you can see other members' solutions and learn from them. If you would like to work in a global company like Google, Facebook, and Amazon, and maybe like them uh, in the future, here's the right place to improve your programming skill because uh, in the interview of these companies, you will be requested to solve such algorithm problems. Another place in topcoder.com is of crowdsourcing. The site divides a real world project into the many small tasks and ask developers to implement them. The scope of a single task is very small, like you can do it in a single night or in a weekend. You can see the spec, schedule, and the prices before you register for each task. I recommend to start looking at tasks marked as fast to finish or F to F. It means that the first person finishing the solution gets the prize money. There you can see how the spec is written in a real world project how other developers ask questions about the task, and how good your solution should be to be accepted and get money. They try and improve your skill on top of that to get a job at a global company, or you may even continue to work in the crowdsourcing area. Top developers here are earning even 1 million yen in a month. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So up next we have Shimon, and after that we have Goro Otsubo, and after that, Mr. John Hayes. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Shimon, and I'm from Bangladesh. Actually, I joined in Rakuten one and a half year ago. And before joining Rakuten, I used to work with different other companies also, uh, like DWH Bank, BASF, GAF. And my interesting area is basically computing efficiency, grid computing. And today, I'm going to have a presentation on in-memory data grid. And also, I want to have a just a focus on Hazelcast, one of the great uh, open source in-memory data grid software. Okay, let's explore it. So the first thing is, what is in-memory grid computing? Okay, as the name mentioned, it's a grid computing. So you have the servers in different servers in different data centers, but they are a same cluster. Okay, and it's in-memory. That it means that uh, in in-memory means that your data are totally in memory. So of course, it's very fast. Okay, as you see from the pictures, there's. There's the application server is there, there is grid server, and there is database server. If you see this picture, uh, you can see that the database server is optional. I mean, the, the time, I mean, the age is coming that you don't need a very expensive database server, right? Like Oracle Excel data, or even you don't need a very expensive storage system. Okay, so that's the main point. I mean, that's the main benefit of in-memory data grid, grid computing. Okay, okay, let's go to, so why in-memory data grid? Okay, of course, the, from the name, uh, is the data in, in memory, and that's why you have very fast of access, fast access of live data, okay? And it's grid, so that's why it's very scalable. It's also high availability, and you can access the data throughout even any of your data center of the whole country, I mean, whole world. Uh, so these are the main benefits, and you can see the graph, uh, I mean, you can see a, a graph in here, the latency and throughput. So it's a uh, in, in memory data grid, the data is very fast, so that's very good, makes very good uh, throughput. Okay, 
So what's uh, the benefit of in-memory data gate in e-commerce? There is a very common bust behavior in e-commerce sites. That is, you know about the rectum supercells and other supercells. The first 30 minutes is there is a very high traffic in first 30 minutes. Everyone wants to buy the car with 50% discount, or everyone wants to buy the apartment with 50% uh, discounts. So in-memory data grid actually works in this area very well. I mean, it can handle a lot of traffic, a certain traffic that is called in the best behavior of uh, uh, e-commerce site. Okay? And you can also do the other stuff, like clustering of your obsession, and uh, it's a real-time large scale distributed caching, real-time application processing by parallel query, and scale application, of course. So I think today morning we have another session uh, regarding uh, OpenStack. So OpenStack is a very pretty cool, I mean, cloud building software, because you can uh, uh, scale out, auto-scale out your servers. Okay, in OpenStack. But the problem is how you can auto-scale out your applications. So in-memory data grid actually works in this area very well. Okay, so next is who are the IMDG market player at present? Okay, they have different softwares of IMDG in the market. One is Hazelcast, open source. Uh, this mainly actually I want to go into focus on this software uh, today. And another is uh, they have different other software also like Coherence of Oracle, like VMware Jamfire, and IBM Scalout software also. And one thing I want to mention is that the Scalout software is uh, one of the companies that Amazon is the technical partner. So some, they have some contribution also in Amazon AWS for Scalout software. So okay, let's see how to implement IMDG. It's not, it's not so difficult, it's just like to implement like other software also. Just first select your, uh, your platform, I mean, which software you want to go to use, Hazelcast or Jamfire or any other things. Then build your server in a single site or multiple site. Multiple site means the data center and different other countries also. Okay, and then install your IMDG server. Okay, so. Thank you very much. So up next we have uh, Mr. Goro Otsubo, followed by John Hayes, and then finally, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, Navawa? Anyway, um, Mr. Goro Otsubo, please. Hi, my name is Goro Otsubo, working for Next. Our next main business is real estate search information service called Homes, and looks like this. And this is our company's corporate message. Okay, sounds nice. But every time I hear this message, I wonder, okay, designing drive to encounters for whom? We provide our service on the web. That means the people who are familiar or comfortable using PC or smartphone can enjoy our service. But how about other people who are interested in real estate information and not comfortable using PC or smartphone? How can we reach them? There are a couple of ways to approach this problem. But in this project, we focused on removing the obstacle to prevent people from using the PC or smartphone. And what is that? Okay, I don't deny the fact GUI has been used very successfully for many decades now. However, because it is so powerful, sometimes we put so, too many choices in a very small screen, like this. Okay, engineer can say, you can set any such conditions with this screen. But sc this screen is filled with option menus, radio boxes, check boxes, and text. This is just intimidating for the novice user. Therefore, we try to replace the GUI menu with physical tangible objects as much as possible. Okay, let me show you a demo. Okay, this is the main screen. And this is the RFID card reader. So each search condition is represented as a physical tangible card and every card on this reader is interpreted as the search conditions. In this case, two rooms, living room, dining room, kitchen with $1,000 budget. And if you decide, okay, I need one more room, just one more room card, okay? So this is a three LDK with $1,000 budget. 
this is a very interesting condition because when you zoom out, okay, you will notice that there is an invisible barrier around the Tokyo area. Okay, you cannot cross Arakawa, Nerima, and Tamaga with one thousand dollar budget. <laughs> but you, if you can afford to pay one thousand dollar more, okay, let's see how the result will change. Now you don't have to travel long hours every morning and every night. Okay, now the system works. It's time for some user test. Okay. I asked 82 years old male and 10 years old male to test our system. This is how they are testing. Okay, I confess. This is my father and my son. <laughs> and after a couple of minutes, uh, my son is bored. But look at my father, okay? He leaned towards the display and he kept using the system for more than 30 minutes. And looking, my, looking at my father, I could firmly believe that, that this system works, okay? Thanks. Thank you very much. So up next we have John Hayes and then after that, Navawa. That was a great talk to uh, follow. Let's get started. Uh, hi, my name is John, and uh, just a little bit about me really quick. Um, I'm a software engineer and architect from Atlanta, Georgia. I used to work for CNN and Yahoo, uh, led a few uh, big teams there. And my talk is called Getting Out of the Maze, Tips for Introducing Process Improvement. But I've only got four minutes, so enough about me. Let's talk about you. You're engineers. And so we're all the kind of people who see problems. And you, if you're in this room, you probably see a problem on your team with project management or the development process, maybe your quality assurance process. But more importantly, you know the solutions as engineers. You know that you need some standard version control flows. You should be using Git, uh, maybe Jenkins continuous integration tools. Maybe you want to implement TDD. But the question is, how do you get there? Well, I'm here to tell you that not every problem is just a process problem. Every problem is a people problem. Change is scary, and we can introduce change by, with, uh, and remove fear by using these principles called the Kanban principles. The first principle is start with the existing process. Don't try to make a huge change overnight. Number two, agree with your team to pursue gradual change, evolutionary change. Number three, respect the current roles, titles, and positions. Don't try to get somebody fired. And number four, agree to value leadership wherever you find it within the team. The next step is to aim for Kaizen, not perfection. A lot of us want to implement the perfect version of an improvement that we have in mind. Let that idea go and remember to make constant daily improvement your aim, not the perfect version of your vision. Number three, maybe most important, always have respect and faith for your team. The fact is, we can't step outside and find someone, tap them on the shoulder, bring them in, and have them do our job. An engineer is a very special kind of person. Engineers tend to be smart, naturally curious, self-teaching people. So if your team has an argument against the improvement that you'd like to make, talk with them, hear it out. There's probably a logical reason behind it. Number four, don't convince sell. If you've got an idea, be able to explain why it's an improvement. If you go looking for a car to buy and the person that's trying to sell it to you says, trust me, you need this car, I'm probably not going to even listen to him. But if he tells me what's so great about this car, it gets better mileage, it'll last me 10 years, uh, I'll be able to drive faster. If he tells me what's so much better about what he's offering, I can decide for myself whether or not I want those benefits. And of course, you can always lead by example. Smart people like the ones on your team will recognize good practices and will follow. Utilizing these simple people skills, my team in the last three months since I joined Rocketon has made exceptional bounds in, in improvement. So uh, we, we've done all the things that you see here, and we're always improving, always advancing. 
So uh, let me just encourage you not to just learn technical skills here at the Rockets and Tech Conference, but some people skills as well, and uh, learn how to sell your vision. If you've got some changes that you'd like to implement in your team, and you'd like to talk about how to do it successfully, this is my email address. Please uh, give me a call. Thanks. Thank you very much. And we have our, our last speaker. And again, I apologize if I've pronounced this wrong, but I believe uh, Mr. Narvawa. Uh, uh, my talk is usually 30 minutes. OK, I talk about, I have to talk 40 minutes, all right? So uh, about me, my name is Nambawa, but my name is Inaba. So uh, short name is Kazi Works, OK? So I was born in Tokyo in a company. Uh, it's like this, OK? And my work is uh, um, mainly to make design about the system and about the inflection and make them, all right? Community and core Linux user group. And Raspberry Pi or Rapid or all press and play pool as other the many things that are my hobby, OK? So I talk about Javis Conference, uh, fourth uh, Javis Conference, 2013 uh, September, uh, legal hardware, which means people are getting together legal hardware about Javis, 150 attendees from 23 countries have joined. Belgian, Swedish, Finnish, Italian, American, Estonian, Latvian, Brazilian, Polish, and Japanese. This is just three persons or others. Okay? So what is Javix? Javix is an open source network software, and by the company of Javix, it's actually made of Latvia by the man Alex Brezhnev. This, uh, this, this, one, uh, this software is like this on the channel like that, okay? And about the contents, uh, speech, presentation, Javix team adjusted, including a lot of talk in Japan except for making us laughing. Okay, we hear about them many times and get questions if you want. So you can share knowledge based on the practice and experience, future thoughts and ideas for two days. Okay, if you get more information, please next to this site. And include the full staff agenda. Welcome to evening party, Javis conference party, or other evening party to the other place. Russian banker with dinner, like Russian style this year, OK? Uh, I'll, I'll talk about Latvia. Uh, Latvia is north of European countries, and it's beyond the EU, and it's near Finland. Yes, Finland is near, OK? Uh, time is seven hours, and uh, usually summertime, six hours. Um, food is very delicious, and beer is also, OK? So our Liga, at least the capital of Latvia, the best way is via Helsinki in Finland. Airlines from Japan, Osaka, Nagoya, Narita, Japan Airlines, and Finia is better. From Helsinki to Riga, it's Finia Air, by, which is called, called Fly B, all right? For Japan to Riga, it takes about 14 hours. Riga is one of the world heritage. So place in the Hotel Riga Hotel, uh, Riga City, uh, Barisonburg Dravago Hotel. Dravago means Dravago, it's like liver. And uh, the Lavison blue means blue sky, OK? Why do I go? My process changed my mind. So the scenario of the picture is like this. Oh, many people get together, and one speaker is that in, uh, in a Dravago Hotel. Yeah, this is the picture of the uh, CEO chairman, uh, Zabix. Oh, it's me. Yeah, it must be tired yeah, every year, OK? I was very, very much tired in my life. We're joking. Well, the scenario of the food is like this, OK? All right? And you can make friends if you go out of here. As a member, member is Finnish. OK, and next year, 2015, Javik's conference. I promise to take part in this conference next year, too. So as presenter, I will make speeches. Why don't you do that? Everybody go around. Uh, I think it's like heaven. It's better to go there more than using drugs. It's joking, OK? You may have a true world in a life which is very, deeply different from common usual life in Japan. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it. That's, yeah. So that's it for the lightning talks. Let's have a round of applause one more time for all of the speakers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Golden Twins. Finally, management, finally, managing executive officer and director, Rakuten Incorporated, Mr. Hiroaki Yastake will give you a closing address. Oh. 
Okay. Uh, uh, thank you uh, for the. All, uh, I wanna I really wanna say thank you for the all of you uh, for joining this event, uh, for giving your precious time even the weekend, and that was very incredible e event. And especially the, I want to say thank you for the speakers, all speakers, uh, to share, uh, sharing your the precious experience, knowledges, and expertise, and many ideas. I, I believe the uh, through this event, uh, many people were inspired uh, through your, the speakers the, uh, with the speakers' great idea, and we uh, make uh, something uh, new uh, for the future. Um, uh, the, before the closing this event, the I want to ask all. Uh, all of you uh, to give you a big applause to the, my staff because this the event uh, is, looks, uh, as you see, a uh, very handmade style, and this uh, event based on the huge effort uh, before today. And I really want to say uh, thank you for the all staffs for your great efforts. Thank you. And as I'm saying the, uh, every year, uh, actually I'm making a closing comment, but this is not the end of this event. The next part uh, is the more important part. It's drinking party. <laughs> and just uh, today, the, I think the, uh, you might uh, be uh, getting tired because you're sitting uh, <clears throat> a long time, but uh, after now, uh, let's enjoy this party. And next uh, will be that the announcement of the party. And thank you, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Yastake. Thank you very much for joining us today. We will have a party on the 13th floor from now. We are looking forward to seeing you there. Lastly, please make sure not to forget anything. Thank you very much. <laughs>